FNAF. Eight years, huh? Wow. Cool. There's been many amazing moments throughout history of FNAF, huh? A lot of them. It'd be really nice if we had someone who just kind of compiled them all together and do a video and talked about it a little bit with a beautiful sounding British voice. I don't know why, there's something about the British accent that just makes me uh, feel like I'm being swaddled in linen. Oh, 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 someone actually did it. Oh. What is going on, dudes? This is Maver the Gamer, and welcome back to another FNAF reaction. So, I know today's Thursday. I get it, okay? You guys are looking for the funny ha-has, but tomorrow, I think, will be the day from now on. Being that my schedule and all that. So, your boy, Super Horror Bro Mike. Oh, man, I've never done one of these from his videos before, but I'm excited because this looks great. He has compiled the best moments in FNAF and put them into one episode. So far, this is so far so i'm assuming he's gonna be doing more so i'm not gonna waste any of your time guys everything will be linked in the description down below so you can check everything out for yourself obviously go subscribe to super horror bro mike the man is a genius when it comes to explaining various horror games including fnaf some could play on this bad boy in three two one Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here. Hi, and in today's Mike! In video, we kick off a new FNAF themed mini series as we take a look at some of the greatest moments from the Five Nights at Freddy's games. Hell yeah. Dude. Over the next few Here videos, I'm going to highlight some of my personal favourite moments from franchise history. But these lists will, of course, be subjective, so let me know what your favourites are in the comments section below. Oh, With that's that why said, I'm here, baby. Let's take a walk down this animatronic themed memory lane as we explore some of FNAF's best moments. Let's go. I'm so tired. Reaching 6 a.m. Five Nights at oh, Freddy's has always been about survival. Obviously, the premise for many of the one. games is to reach the end of a night shift, and upon doing so, the player is given a brief reprieve from their animatronic nightmare. Each time the player reaches 6 a.m., they are greeted by a celebratory cheer. Children. Love the children. Still satisfying to this day. Mmm. Love it. It's 4 p.m. and Surely I'm literally ready to go back to Surely the most gratifying sound in <laughs> FNAF history. But why is surviving a night one of FNAF's best moments of all time? Well, quite simply, because these are difficult games, based on a mixture of skill and luck due to their RNG nature. Managing resources such as power while trying to monitor the animatronics movement around the building is anxiety inducing, and the really relief was, felt from finally beating a night is palpable. It's multitasking. It's, it's what it is. The secret newspapers, oh yeah. When the original Five Nights at Freddy's game released in 2014, it was a bit of a mystery. By now we know of the cryptic and intricate lore woven into these games by creator Scott Cawthon. A story which connects each of the eight titles up to the spin-off games, books, and graphic novels, and has led to an entire theory community rising up to decipher its hidden mysteries. But if we rewind to the original release, FNAF appeared, at least on the surface, to be a simple point and click survival horror experience, full of terrifying animatronic jump scares. However, gradually, as players paid attention to the finer details, they realised FNAF was more than it first appeared. This began with newspaper clippings, which would occasionally pop up on walls while viewing certain camera feeds around the pizzeria. These newspapers told the tragic tale of missing children at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, abducted by a man who dressed as a company mascot. A suspect was charged, but the bodies were never found, and eventually this bad press led to the closure of the restaurant. From here, it as new created games released, the lore aspect and of the, the game, community man. pulled at those loose lore threads, a yeah. greater picture of a FNAF universe began to emerge. But it all began with those newspaper easter eggs. Everyone just started looking for everywhere you went in the games just Phone to find Phone Guy the is, for many, one of the most beloved characters from FNAF history, voiced by the creator himself, Scott Cawthon. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night, but do I blame them? No. If I were forced to sing those same stupid songs for 20 years and I never got a bathroom, 
I'd probably be a bit irritable at night too. <laughs> Phone Guy appears as a so major funny, support yeah. character in both Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and 2, as well as a smaller supporting role in FNAF 3. Yeah. His job is to familiarize the protagonist and, by extension, the player with the game's mechanics. Didn't he also While play the guy so, who Phone Guy also provides a little story information for us to go on. Similar. For our many great Phone Guy moments, his conversations are full of goofy humor and always a pleasure to listen to. Well, to begin with at least. The further into the story of each FNAF game we get, the more unhinged and worried Phone Guy becomes. A defining moment in the original Five Nights at Freddy's is found during Night 4, where it is revealed that Phone Guy's conversations this game's lore, have been pre-recorded some time Can't ago, wait for the and he movie. himself hope, fell victim to the animatronics. <laughs> this chilling revelation is surely one of the creepiest and most iconic moments from any of the FNAF games, and mm -hmm. is highly effective in making an already unsettling story that a little more horrifying. By now, it is common knowledge that the evil mastermind behind the animatronic designs and missing children was a man called William Afton. Afton used his position as one of the two founders of Fazbear Entertainment to abduct and murder I young visitors of the game. pizzeria, so luring cool. them into the party room after hours and then <laughs> hiding their bloody remains within the various animatronic suits. These actions are never explicitly shown. These are teen-rated horror games after all. Rather, they are cryptically teased via a selection of retro 8-bit style minigames. The best of these story-related minigames can be found when looking at Five Nights at Freddy's 3, where we learn of William's gruesome demise. Haunted by the spirits of his five child victims, Afton hides himself away inside a Spring Bonnie suit. This move turns out to be a fatal error on his part, as the spring lock fails and snaps shut, impaling Afton and fusing his body with the animatronic outer shell. Not only is this sequence so great because of its lore implications, it also provides context for who that creepy rabbit stalking us throughout FNAF 3 actually is. It's a chilling reveal. Discovering Springtrap has been William Afton this entire time. That was a gr that was probably my favorite game. For, Sister for Location, a bit. the fifth FNAF game, moved away from the template of rinse and repeat gameplay found in the first four entries to create something more unique. No longer were players confined to one room. Instead, we explored a sister location to Fazbear Entertainment's own restaurant chain founded by William Afton. Players moved from room to room, each night completing a different minigame. Between these minigames, we received instructions from a softly spoken female animatronic called Circus Baby. You must be careful. You must remain calm and listen to my voice. It eventually becomes apparent that this has been an elaborate setup and we have stepped into a cleverly manufactured trap. Circus Baby was initially designed by William Afton went. to scoop up children and hide them in her belly. Unfortunately, his daughter Elizabeth ended up as Baby's unintended victim, and now haunts her body. Elizabeth creates a plan to free the ghosts of her fellow child victims. She does this by tricking the player into removing parts of each animatronic, and finally her own endo, and then fusing them together into one singular creation known as Ennard. If that wasn't enough, the protagonist, commonly believed to be Michael Afton, Elizabeth's own brother, finds himself trapped inside the scooping room. You are in the scooping room now. Funtime Foxy has already been here today. Funtime Freddy has already been here today. Ballora has already been here today. 
Circus Baby has already been here today. Creepy. And then I've there's Ennard. Before, but they always put me back. They always put us back inside. There's nowhere for us to hide here. There is nowhere to go. Imagine this when happening, though, like for real. This. But if we looked like you, then we could hide. If we looked like you, then we would have somewhere to go. The scooper Jesus. only hurts for a moment. Ennard proceeds to activate the scooper, hollowing out poor Michael and in turn allowing the jumble of endos to crawl inside his body and escape the sister location. It's so this bizarre unbelievably twist creepy. is so weird and wacky, it almost feels ridiculous. Almost. It's handled in a way that somehow works in FNAF's kooky universe and remains one of the creepiest twists in the series to date. Ugh. And with that, we come to the end of FNAF's Greatest Moments Part 1. Loved Stay tuned, it though. as in the next episode of this mini series, we continue this nostalgic look back at what made these animatronic horror games so special. With that said, let me know what some of your favourite moments from FNAF history are in the comments section below. And remember to leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it, as well as subscribing for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Bye bye! Oh man, that was great. Yes, I remember playing the original FNAF games and just playing them for what they are, just for the horror and scary part of it, but then the lore aspect really came into effect, and it was just everything got blown out of proportion every time, like a new teaser was implemented from Scott on Scott Games. Everyone was analyzing the crap out of it. Matt Pat, for instance, he's been doing this ever since the FNAF games came out. The community blew up. Everyone just was like, the lore, give me the lore. So honestly, I'd say uh, my favorite part of the whole franchise when it comes to lore is possibly that connection terminated ending. It was so dramatic, so well curated. I loved it so much. That was probably one of my favorites when it comes to the lore aspect. Well, that game in general, just like at the very beginning, you're playing this wonky 8-bit style game that you have, you're throwing pizzas for freak's sakes, and then it glitches and it freaks out, and then all of a sudden you're in front of Scrap Baby interviewing her. Like that was probably one of the best moments as well because everyone was just like, what? What happened? Did we just get a secret FNAF game? Well, guys, that was a compilation of some of FNAF's best moments created by Super Howard Bone Mike. And that was episode one, so make sure you go subscribe and all that if you want episode two. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and everything will be linked in the description down below so you can check everything out for yourself, obviously along with Super Howard Bone Mike's channel. Please go subscribe to the boy for making this amazing mini series and I can't wait for episode two. Since I'm not doing a Try Not To Laugh Challenge today and I'm doing it tomorrow, there will be two reaction videos today, so stay tuned for the other. So like it, maybe enjoy, subscribe for some more videos, and I'll see you in the next one. So bye.